<laughs> <laughs> just keep burping. We gotta give you something that keeps you burping oh, every yeah, ten yeah. minutes. It's oh, perfect. It's like give me a seltzer. Or <laughs> fruit. And all of a sudden, you'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> Might be throw up. But. I don't like, I'll probably puke. <laughs> fruit makes me burp a lot. Really? Yeah. I ate a pear this morning, and I was like, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Of belching. Me. Yeah. Any kind Weird. of fruit. I don't know why. Hmm. Is it worth it? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that is so interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. Like eat an apple? Just oh, just belch. Comes up. Yeah. We but. endorse it. <laughs> Support. Hopefully. That's all I contribute to the podcast now. <laughs> Once in a while Kristen burps. And, oh, that's Kristen. Oh, she's Kristen's here. The podcast. She's there. Oh. I feel like I have to make an announcement. Like I was here last week <laughs> physically. <laughs> I did not miss out, but just... um. <laughs> All right. What? Nice one, Wes. <gasps> that was it? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my so gosh. Nice. Looks like it's straight out of a movie. I know. It was literally. Wow. It was so nice. Mm-hmm. That's gorgeous. So nice. And then the sunset. I love the simplicity of it. Well, it looks so cool. Right. But she like brought all this stuff with her because she wanted a certain look. So love that. Not the flowers, wow. but like all her Yeah. Actions, she, like, wow. With her That's with a lot. Her. And then they were have spark Oh my gosh. It was so cool. And then where they got married was like, like it was a sky on the rooftop so you could see the water. It was like a. That's so cool. Yeah, like that. Oh, that's thing. so nice. So it was really cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. It was funny that they had sparkle things on the dance floor and they kept oh, wow. almost hitting us with them. <laughs> really? Jen was dancing next to these oh giant flame God. sparkles <laughs> and then all of a sudden just blasts out from the floor. You're like, what the? And <laughs> you jump to the side. Floor. So like, and there was a lot of us and it was like the perfect size dance floor for the amount of people. But the amount of hairspray I had in my hair. <laughs> Me. I'm gonna go. <laughs> good thing the water was close by, but yes. it wouldn't have been good. I had so much hairspray. <laughs> that was so oh funny. man, and then it kept happening a few times. <laughs> it also was nice that they had uh, an MC who was very involved. So he was just this oh, sassy cool. Jamaican gay guy who nice. would just be out on the dance floor, like doing moves. And then he'd be calling people out um, who weren't on the dance floor. Like, you know, you can smoke your cigar later. Come on out here. And then he'd like call people out. This is the party. That's not the party. And everyone was on the dance floor. That's by kind of great. What a good MC. He was coordinating yeah. everything, like, leading the J&J dances. He's like, this party, not whatever you're doing over there party. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. He said it was funny. like a tone. It was really funny. <laughs> And then he convinced us all to jump in the pool afterwards. Yeah, And even the bride and groom did. No awesome. way. Like yeah. in their outfits? Yep. <laughs> no way. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I was oh, like, I it was cool. Yeah, it's like that. a movie. Yeah, it yeah. Was it was so crazy. Hot too. Really? Oh. Like, because you're dancing and everyone's on yep. top, like, near each other. And it yeah. wasn't a very spacious. And the breeze, for some reason, from the ocean wasn't, like, every other time. It didn't feel, you couldn't <laughs> feel it. So... Yeah, everyone's like, I'm just going to jump in. And I love that. One after another. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go in. I was going to say, did, did you? Yeah. No, I was nervous about my dress. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is fair. I said yeah. if I was yeah. a bridesmaid, I would totally jump in because you never wear them again. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wear this dress a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't ruin, you can't ruin one that you're <laughs> Yep. That I wear at every wedding. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> the dress. <laughs> I just have to accessorize a different one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, well, I'll knock out some Harry Potter. Let's do yes. it. Um. Okay. Mm-hmm. Out of, I mean, I'm maybe just like a sad question to start. You know, out of because <laughs> we Colin Creepy dies this mm-hmm. chapter where we learn about Ooh. him dying. Yeah. What uh? What death has hit you guys Wait, the hardest? What chapter are we on? <laughs> I think thirty-four. <laughs> 
four, four the forest yeah. again okay that's what i thought but i didn't realize he was in this one okay yeah so harry kind of just passes them by and neville is uh holding him with oliver wood and uh that's how like he bumps into neville there but out of every death that's happened so far which one has been the one that has hurt you guys the most or the hardest one I laugh at all. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'll cry. <laughs> and I don't want to. Aww. It's okay. You can let but it out. But apparently, I stunted his tears, so go first. <laughs> um, I would say Dumbledore's was the hardest because there was actually time to grieve within the story. Yeah. Um, mm. But I think these deaths are just so much more shocking. Mm. They just happen and then they're gone. You're like, what? What just happened? And now we just have to go fight the Dark Lord? Yeah. Um, so Colin Creevy was intense because you just don't expect it. There's not even a, a battle happening at the moment. So then it's just like, uh, I don't know. Wait, what's that phrase about the innocence being? Uh, Always the innocent to go. So it has been in yeah. ages past. So it is now. There it is. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Um, and then so Colin Creevy, to me, beginning. that feels like the perfect uh, yes. example of that. Yeah. Because I think everyone else kind of knew what they were getting themselves into. But he's so young and innocent that um, his heart was in the right place. He was being intentional about it, but he's just too young to even I know. know better. I don't know. It just feels like he was too young. I know. Um, crazy like even uh lupin and tonks they're just it's like a throwaway line that they're just bodies are just laying there and so even in this chapter when harry sees them again when he you know resurrects them they all look younger or T lupin at least because he's the only one there looks younger and he looks whole and like that almost crushes you more hmm. you're like he, he lupin i mean he wasn't like an old man but he was he still was kind of young when he died yeah all these people were pretty young dumbledore was the only one who wasn't really really that young but it's interesting, too, because you guys uh, were, like, happy when Snape died, and then all of a sudden all this new information comes up, and you're like, oh, man. that I, mean, I don't know if it hurts, but it's like... It oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. Just because it, it leaves you confused, like, could they have done something different or better, or why did it happen like this? What if he had done this or told him then or wasn't so mean? Do we actually like him? I'm a little sad, but should I be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it just like I leaves you with so many questions. For him. Yeah. You were always rooting for him. Except I think I rooted when he was being killed too. <laughs> to rewatch them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I thought he would be redeemed before he died. I know. Yeah, that does stink. So that was a little annoying. It was interesting because it was always in your brain. I feel like that Snape had the potential to be good. I remember one podcast we were talking and Danny was like, or I asked like, cause you guys still had hope for Snape. You're like, you know, Snape is still good before the fifth book, especially even before the sixth book. You're like, Snape is still good. And I was like, what could Snape do that would turn him and make you make him irredeemable in your eyes eyes. And I think you mentioned like killing someone like a Danny was like, if he killed someone, that's mm. like the moment. And then as soon as he kills Dumbledore, Danny's is like, Danny's out. I was like, that's He's it. like, he, there's, there's no, no way. excuse. And it's all because of that line of Dumbledore saying, please. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, what the? <laughs> yeah. So that was funny. Yeah. It really fools you with that one. Are you saying, please kill me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we discussed this. Mm -hmm. Like, do what we discussed, please. But we just took it the opposite way. Because that's what you're... Well, she's such a I mean, writer, how could so you're yeah, supposed exactly. to. You, until you know the ending, you're like, he's, he's saying, yep. please, begging for his life. Where in reality, he's saying, please, begging for Snape to kill him. Yep. It's so good. It's such I mean, a good it always brings me phrase. back to uh, the Buckbeak moment of the unmistakable thud, yeah. which was mistakable because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't the thud of a beheading. <laughs> um, yeah, so. I don't even remember that. It's just like another time where she like clearly led us somewhere, and then there was a curveball. Although time travel, who could have seen that one coming? But. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she had some interesting yeah. things in here. Um, but wait, Jen, what what death was hardest for you? I already answered that. Weren't you paying attention? I guess not enough. <laughs> Do I get a hint or I have to wait till the podcast comes out? I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I missed it too. Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. um, I don't know. I just said some stuff about Snape. 
Dumbledore was the shocking one, I think, though. I was maybe not the sad. I don't know. I don't know if that would count as saddest, but most shocked. Mm. Yeah, I guess whatever like affected you most. He was like one of the main characters that were gonna defeat <laughs> Voldemort. So. Yeah. But the other ones didn't bother me as much. Mm. They it's, should. Mm. It's interesting. I don't know. It doesn't necessarily matter. Th- thing. I don't think they should or not. I think everyone like has this expectation. You know, a bunch of people who are reading for the first time, especially reading between the books, like you got to sit with the characters mm. um, for all the time in between the books. So you had like all sorts of theories and like uh, there's just a different emotional connection. But so true. with most people who read them now, like they're not so devastated by, you know, one or two of the deaths. Like I know some people who, when Sirius died, that was like the only one that they cared about. Like they were like, love Sirius. Mm. And when he's, when he's dead, they don't even want to read the books anymore. Cause they're so devastated. But like, like some of my family, they read this and they're like, there are certain parts where they get choked up, but I love hearing where everyone kind of gets choked up in the, in the series. And like deaths are just a natural one where like people get choked up at. But my brother read through the series and he got choked up at a totally different one. Not none of the deaths, but a totally different moment that's coming up. Um, that's oh. just like so good. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so cute to hear him uh, get choked up at that. But it's interesting that none of you, you guys did not think that Harry was the most devastating death. So you don't, do you not think he's dead? No. <laughs> I don't. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know enough. I'm holding my breath on that. And and you know what? I think there needs to be conclusion before there could be grief. So for me, I'm like, did it? Is it? And she's too tricky about everything. So I'm waiting for there to be like some kind of something. All right. Um, so no, I do not think of him as dead yet. Hmm. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Maybe we'll yeah, see. I don't know if I would really process any of these deaths. Mm. I just read over yeah. them. <laughs> well, that's why it would be and so I crazy. Know you want next. answers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel like between books with processing big deaths and having to wait for the next book gives mm-hmm. you a lot of time to like grieve and think it over. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then even just growing up with the characters, if you've read the books over years, it would mean the characters have been in your life for a longer period of time. Yeah. So again, mm-hmm. just the stunted uh, reading experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, welcome to the podcast. I'm John. Jen. Danny. And Kristen. And this is Harry Potter and the First Time Readers. So I don't think this this uh, chapter is going to be incredibly long, but we'll have a little discussion on this one, and then we'll just kind of listen to the next one. They didn't tell theirs. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, good point. What were you or two? <laughs> oh most devastating up till now <laughs> up till now okay because harry's still alive yeah if only for another <laughs> second because <and a> <laughs> harry's still alive <laughs> trying to think or is it different because you watch the movie first and then the yeah, book maybe i feel like this time around serious was hmm. rough for me I'm trying to remember. It was so long ago. I know, seriously. I know. <laughs> yeah, like when was that? I don't even know. <laughs> it's like a year, like and a year ago. ago, yeah. No, oh, probably a year. I don't know. I, I got to think about that. But maybe him. Each one hits me For at me. different, yes. each read hits me at different times. I think yeah. the mm-hmm. the one, this one, this one that was maybe most affected was uh, the Tonks and Lupin, or yeah, Tonks and Lupin one. Mm-hmm. Because every single time I forget how much of a throwaway it is. And. It's just so devastating, especially when you reread this, um, like rereading the whole series, you'll see just some devastating things that she put in right before, um, Tonks, right before this passage where they die, you have the, the whole idea that Tonks is essentially looking for Lupin yeah, and like searching the castle for Lupin. And it's kind of like a microcosm of the relationship where they're like, they're not almost on, they're not really on the same page. And then mm. finally they come together and then mm-hmm. it's the end of their life. It's like they had such a short time together, which is just devastating. Mm-hmm. And like there was a lot of turmoil in the midst of it. And finally they were happy. They had a moment when they were happy. You know, they had the kid mm-hmm. and it was so you're, you're like, this is great. Finally, some joy in this war that we haven't gotten in an entire series. And then all of a sudden both of them are dead and it's devastating. 
So I, that one probably hit me the hardest for this one. I think on my first time read. But you loved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first time read, I think Fred was the hardest. That was oh, one where I was devastated. Because yep. you, you just love the twins in your first mm-hmm. time read. I mean, every you read you love mention. them. But... Yeah. Um, I was going to, but I thought you might. So I wanted to leave you at least one. Um, no, because I think he started off the deaths. Where then you're like, oh, this is real. It's happening now. This is not like a future battle. This is the battle. Uh-huh. So I feel like that's why it really catches you with yeah. a left hook. Yeah. I think if it was one of the three, like I said, I'm c- including Harry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it was like Ron or Hermione, that probably would have been rough. Mm. Up to now. Yeah. Whatever that looks like. Yeah. And uh, we'll we'll hit the movie deaths too when we actually do the next few movies yeah those will probably cry so yeah. you'll get your tears honestly they're pretty devastating <laughs> the they um the dumbledore death they do change to some extent and oh, we'll talk about that a lot um they the cedric death is really good in the movies um, i was just gonna say i forgot about that yeah one. That, was mm-hmm. a tough that one, one hits me yeah it just comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. The Dobby yeah. death is really good. So I'm saying the, Do- the oh, Dobby one is really good. I forgot good. about Dobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can't remember. Right. That one was sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a tough one. Yep. That's um, up there. Everyone's it feels like dying. so long ago. I know. Uh, yeah. So wow. much has happened since yeah. Dobby. <laughs> True. It's because she always waits to like the end and then it's like bam, 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 bam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, sorry. I'm not trying to. Well, maybe I am. I don't, like don't like world building. I just want yeah. like facts. Just <laughs> tell me the such story. Such a funny reading experience. You're like, just give me the freaking answer. And then Stop it's like describing the, the forest yeah. or the building. I'm like, I could care yeah. less. Like, I just tell me what <laughs> the story. It was so funny too during our live read of the uh, Prince's Tale or the Elder Wand when Voldemort's like circling his prey. He's like, oh, you know. This is why the wand doesn't work for me. And he just doesn't arrive at the point. And Jen's like, will you just say what the heck the answer is already? <laughs> you like couldn't even deal with it. I was like, them. how many times are you going to say the same thing over and over again? Like, just stop. Like, that doesn't, I don't know. I guess I'm not a reader because no. it doesn't work for me. Mm. Makes it so funny to me. Um, but this is for a lot of, you'll kind of get this as we go on through the last, which is now the last three chapters, which is crazy. But I'm curious at the end of the series Whoa. what you think is like the best chapter, the culmination of the, all the chapters. Because a lot of mm. fans love this one for different reasons that we'll kind of come to at the very end of the series. But um, in the beginning of this, Harry kind of comes out of this dream or it comes out of the, the memory. And again, he's like, he has this line. It says, Harry understood at last that he was <laughs> not supposed to survive. His job was to walk calmly into death's welcoming arms. Along the way... He was to dispose of Voldemort's remaining links to life so that when at last he flung himself across Voldemort's path and did not raise a wand to defend himself, the end would be clean. And the job that ought to have been, in Godric, been done in Godric's Hollow would be finished. Neither would live. Neither could survive. So, Was that the summary of this chapter? No. Oh, we didn't even do a summary of this chapter. That was me nudging lightly. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want to do the summary? (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah, do it. You're good at them. I don't remember. (laughs) That's why I wanted it. Oh, she needs a summary. I think I do too. Ah. Well, this is um, Harry's, uh, his his death march, you know? So he, at the end of the last chapter, we're left wondering, is he going to... How is he going to react to everything he saw? And we were being skeptical. Then we find out he is he's kind of accepting it from the first paragraph, like mm. John just read. Oh, um, that's when he like tucks his wand in and yeah. like walks. Yeah, he's saying, um, I'm going to gonna just go for but it. But then everyone who's some people are appearing. They're like, right. So that was from kinda the ghost. resurrection mm-hmm. stone because oh, that was in the stitch because he tells a snitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because oh, right. he, so he got a lot of answers the in the chapter. But, yeah, yeah, he said the clothes. I forget exactly what the wording was. He it says, wasn't exactly I'm a di- clothes, I'm but like go, I'm he goes, die I'm ready to die. Yeah. Like the clothes of his, clothes of his life. story, his life. Yeah. So then he feels the resurrection stone, sees all the people, and then he kind of gets to. Uh, they walk with him. Yeah, for a little bit, and then he makes it to yeah, uh, Waldemar. <laughs> yeah, and all the neurons are firing. Right before that, too, he tells Neville, he, like, spills... Oh, yeah. Not necessarily spills the beans, but he's like, you have to destroy the snake. Oh. He tells Neville that he mm. has to destroy the snake right mm. before. 
and then yeah it gets like his processional then he walks gets down to the the forest like you know has all the memories of hagrid in his cabin and goes into the forest um finds resurrection stone and everything danny said yeah then he kind of like walks through this and then at the very end of the chapter he sees a flash of green light and then that's the end of the chapter oh and hagrid was in the uh yeah circle mm-hmm. alive captive yeah oh yeah and he's like harry don't go yeah blah 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 gotcha. blah 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 and then you had that line who had what line well he was reading the line and i got interrupted <laughs> <laughs> no, <that's good. laughs> this is another line that you have which i want to this is part of the same thing but it says dumbledore's betrayal was almost nothing of course there had been a bigger plan harry had simply been too foolish to see it he realized that now so again was dumbledore really just raising him like a pig for slaughter is the whole purpose of harry's life has the whole purpose of harry's life been to die at this moment i guess i don't i don't get that though like why keep him i guess it's like either dumbledore just needed to figure out all the horcruxes and until he figured them out harry could live Mm. like i don't understand and also we I'm trying to remember in the memories nah. though when Dumbledore knew that Harry would have to die because maybe he didn't know that Harry was a Horcrux and he's looking at everything else and saying like maybe there's a chance or we have to figure out a way to work this out um, and then he just concluded and he's so good with his emotions you can't tell mm-hmm. so it came off a little cold in the memory of like yeah he's got to this is how it has to be um, but that's the same way Dumbledore was about his own death. Mm-hmm. He finds out he has, you know, wizard cancer here. And, and basically <laughs> he, he kind of knows like this is serious and says, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to face this uh, and come up with a new plan and pivot. And, and he, I think I'm assuming the same kind of thing with Harry where it may have come off cold, but only because he realized it's what had to be done. But I'm still trying to hold out hope that there's more to the Dumbledore side, but I just can't figure out how. Yeah. Like, what would the extra, what would that missing piece be where Dumbledore really did care for him? What's the, the Dumbledore always, you know, um, where, how could he have not been raising Harry in a manipulative way? I just can't quite figure it out. Well, there's, a, I guess there's a point to it in this chapter where you see, like, maybe here's a question. Did Dumbledore, do you think that Dumbledore loved Harry? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I feel like. Can I say something? Yeah. May I actually speak? <laughs> may, may I blink? Um, I feel like he grew to love him. Hmm. If that makes sense. Because uh, I feel how? like it's all kind of like just making sense to me now, even with like how he was a Horcrux. So it's like in order to get rid of Voldemort. You have to get rid of the Horcruxes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I wonder if Dumbledore thought of him as just like this object kind of at first. Mm. So it was like he kind of was taking him under his wing. But through that, he kind of learned Mm. to love like, you know, he got to know him. Yeah. So it's like the more you get to know him and Harry, you know. (laughs) Is he lovable? (laughs) I was going to say he's like lovable, but you know, he's like his own. He's Harry, you know, he's just so Harry. It's like, how could you not grow to love him? Yeah. You know, the line that's a little weird to me from Dumbledore where Snape is complaining about um, Harry, just like his father, mediocre, arrogant. Um, And Dumbledore does defend Harry, say, you see what you expect to see. But then he says, personally, I find him an engaging child. And that just feels kind of like <laughs> distant to me. I'm like, he's so utilitarian. Uh, yeah, just like he's a pretty engaging child. It's like it just feels so scientific and like <laughs> like he's just from a distance observing a Horcrux walking around, just like mm. just like analyzing him. It reminds you of it just feels weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like a very um, he's just assessing him. He's an engaging child, not like <laughs> not loving him, not like this deep. There's not feeling there. It's mm. just like he's engaging. Ugh. like his merit is just how much he entertains you. Yeah, like, know, again, yeah, it's yeah. the engagement of him. That is what is appealing. Um, when I feel like there are so many other things Dumbledore could have said, but again, Where you know, put that? all your secrets in one basket. The so that's on page 679 of this book. I don't, I, I don't know if it's the yeah, same, it's but it's when Harry's in the memory in the prince's tale. And it's kind of in Probably when the end of that Snape one. is the teacher. Now 
and he's talking to Dumbledore. Harry's probably, this must be in book two or three or something. Um, and he's just kind of venting. And it, it's a funny moment. So I'm not sure if we have any indication of when this would be in the books. Yeah. yeah. Um, Harry obviously has a uh, It, it is funny, interesting but. because I feel like there's a point where Dumbledore um, is really good at talking the talk of all this kind of stuff. Like, you know, talking about the power of love. But the question is, does Dumbledore really ever love anyone or does he have any love in his heart? Or has he shut that out for himself? Because, I mean, you talk mm. about the way that he even... Like, he mentions... Like, that line is such a funny line to me because... He talks about Cedric at Cedric's funeral in a much more beautiful way. Yes. Then he talks about Harry, who he spends like all the all You're this time. You're so with. right. With Harry, he's just like an interesting, you know, subject. <laughs> with Cedric, That's it was like remember a boy who is good, like he remembers him for his goodness and for right. his kindness, and you know the things that make up a Hufflepuff. And you're like. <laughs> but maybe because it's like he's like an unknown like they don't know which way he could go because i was even yeah. thinking while you guys were talking like what if dumbledore shared this information with harry too young and then harry actually wants to join forces with like the crazy opposite where he could join forces yeah. with voldemort yeah. and they both would be against everyone like they could live mm. forever because if they're let's say connected so yeah, I don't Voldemort know if he had to be careful because he also got burned by bringing yep. Voldemort, Voldemort in. in. Mm. And so he had to keep his dis. Like, I don't know. I just, there's other things that probably play into him yeah, distancing himself and not falling in love with this boy. And like, let's keep him alive and see what he's capable of. Yeah. No, you're, I think you're uh, totally right. Because yeah. if you got burned already once by, I like, know. bringing mm -hmm. someone into, like, knowledge so he, and power. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of, like, shut himself off of that a little bit. Mm. Yeah, which, I mean, that's, like, the question. So, I mean, one of the tough ones is when did Dumbledore really know about this plan? Because if he knew about this from the start, he seems like he was being manipulative from a while. But if he knew about this maybe later on and he grew to love Harry, then this becomes a much more devastating decision that he has mm. to make. But it seems like he knew this early on. So maybe he just grows to love Harry and it becomes painful for him to do this. Like, did he send them off to Petunia's and uh, Vernon's so that he could just be safe so that or he, he die knows some time? other ancient magic? That yeah, he's like, you have to sacrifice yourself, but you're not actually going to die. But here's the the tough part of that is, has there been any indication in the books ever that Dumbledore has known something like like there's been like, you know, this the whole book he's known something harry didn't know yeah that's true but he's he's known something harry hasn't known didn't know that harry was supposed to die has there been any indication lord dumbledore's like you know like shot this like you know has been like victorious over something and like you know maybe spilled some beans to harry inadvertently about oh there's a way that you can live the it doesn't only seem time, like that no there's, yeah yeah only time was like a I don't think it's answering your question, but when the Ministry of Magic, when Voldemort tries to take over Harry's body and he has to get out yeah. of it because it's too much like love. Yeah. But that's what I find mm. strange too. Like they're connect. I don't know. It's just, it's weird. Cause I'm like, if he took over the body, there's too much love, but he left it. So couldn't that part of him leave and he'd still be alive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we just don't know how uh, Horcruxes work, mm. especially in a human. But also, if he's trying to kill Harry, but you have to use, what is it? You have to use dark magic to kill a Horcrux? No, Seems like it. different. Because the Sword of Gryffindor was not dark. Oh, and right. that could kill it. Uh, all I'm saying is, like, what would, he, like, would it actually kill Harry though? Like, even if you used the right, killing right. curse, because yeah. if let's say he is a Horcrux, would a killing cur curse kill a Horcrux? I don't. know. Well, we had speculated. What if the mm. person who created the Horcrux is the one doing it? Yeah, and that would be different. Or and the Elder Wand himself? being. That's what yeah. I thought. So, like, those are two recording. ways that it could still work. Um, and even the sword, the sword only can destroy Horcrux because it's impregnated with something, not wicked, but a basilisk, basilisk venom. 
Oh. So that's the reason it can destroy a Horcrux. Not because it's just the sword of Gryffindor. Interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought, like, even Dumbledore had trouble. So I'm like, even, like yeah. if you're doing the killing curse on, I know it's a person, but if it's a Hork, yeah. like, what does that combo look like? And could you actually kill them with the killing curse? Wait, could who? Like, could, it, could Voldemort actually kill Harry or Harry his own Horcrux? Or, because if yeah. he's part Horcrux, part Voldemort, what is that going to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the question that we're left with at the end of the chapter because we don't know. Hmm. But you know what? My, my faith in Dumbledore is growing because <laughs> it opened at the Sounds close. Like it. <laughs> and, and, well, I guess that's a weird thing too. Like, Dumbledore knew there was going to be a close. Hmm. He knew that Harry would still have this snitch at the close of his life. And then he kind of, it seems like, knew that Harry was going to figure it out at the end. But then... But is he just setting him up to, like, stage an acting thing when he's setting... Like, he's, like, he's spilling, like, little information so everyone believes this, but it's not actually true. Like, Dumbledore could be feeding Snape saying like he has to die and then those are the memories that people see and then they're believing it and then harry actually goes and sacrifices himself but actually that's the best thing sacrificing yourself right because because that's love there's no So you guys mentioned this i think during the live read or maybe even last one so you think by harry sacrificing himself like this that there's going to be some kind of protection on the school or something like that or on the rest of the people kind of on everyone else because he's dying for them willingly if that's the case then you guys have to admit that harry's gonna die then well yeah and but that's the only way that i can be okay with it (laughs) (laughs) i want (laughs) oh yeah because it's like then that makes sense again that's the uh that kind of finishes the Ooh, interesting i was gonna say finishes the christ arc but it actually doesn't um (laughs) and so it's to me it feels like this is the like his moment Mm. to do what dumbledore wants him to do Mm. and he has chosen in this chapter to trust dumbledore by saying you know what if i have to die then i do and i'm gonna go and he seems to not even question it um and he's gonna do it with his wand down so i think as he's trusting dumbledore I am too. And to be completely but I, I'm confused, well, I, I have one slight uh, amendment to that. I don't know so much as he, if he's trusting Dumbledore so much as he's just coming to the realization himself oh, of really yeah. realizing this is what he needs to do and he, he's known it all along. Right. Like there's a right. point to this chapter where you're like, Harry is marching down and he's like, he comes to this realization and he's like, okay, so Dumbledore kind of explains this. But in the back of his mind, I think he's like, I knew this was my my you know allotted path the entire time um he's i don't know there's a like a hint to this chapter where it seems like that but maybe it is just flat out he's trusting Mm. in dumbledore for this so if he's trusting in dumbledore maybe dumbledore has like this greater path laid out for him but yeah yeah, you just don't know wait what um my thought process was why dumbledore gave him the resurrection stone for just if he even knew that this was the moment just to say goodbye to some people like or to have a little extra nudge did he need that nudge no, I think didn't it seem was like it but maybe alone. yeah sure okay <clears throat> yeah i guess i'm trying to find a way where he has all of the hollows together <laughs> because <laughs> he has the resurrection stone he has the invisibility cloak and he has a wand on his chest but whose wand is that draco's that mm. Draco's wand. You know, Draco didn't is, even pick up his I own wand. He, his like, parents did. Dropped the stone, so it's not. Like Would Dumbledore it. have given Draco the Elder Wand as a child <laughs> to, to use <laughs> all his time, <laughs> knowing that Draco Harry would end up with it? A, uh, to be a big first It just it feels like Dumbledore has set up this <laughs> moment, and I just want to see what what's the thing where this goes well because it doesn't look like it now, and. Yeah, but I'm the one that has the faith in things that you don't. So. <laughs> um, well, I, but I'm trying to logic my way into them, like it working out. Um, and the wand is the part that we just don't understand. Voldemort is convinced he has the other wand. I don't think it's going to work for him if it is the wand. But then how does Harry get it? Because he's a better wizard. <sighs> He He's not dead. dead. <laughs> well, we just don't know. But the thing is, Voldemort is literally using the wand to attack Harry. So 
that feels weird. Like yeah, but if how... it's someone that's not putting up a fight, would it actually kill them? Is that in a weird way like more noble? The ones like yo, I respect that Harry. And there, I mean, I yeah, maybe. So. Yo, I the, respect that. Wanler in, in this book has it's been really interesting because wearing. yeah, it just it <laughs> comes oh. out of me now. Yeah, I didn't even touch that. <laughs> Wanlor has been interesting in this book because you've seen Wands <laughs> past in really bizarre ways. <clears throat> like the Elder Wand has passed through, it seems like sneaky, like like uh, inadvertent ways. It's not necessarily just, you know, flat out beating the owner in a duel. It's like, you know, he, his Dumbledore is disarmed and all of a sudden Snape comes and kills him. <clears throat> so it's like he gets the wand because this weird little occurrence happened versus like either even other people like Hermione or uh, Ron steals all these wands from Snatchers and maybe are they the rightful owners of the wand the same thing with like Draco's wand like Harry has Draco's wand now is he the rightful owner of Draco's wand what does that mean for everything it's like yeah yeah like, wand ownership is weird in this book that's why I also think that like it has kind of its mind of its own so like if it's made for that whole death with the hallows tale right or whatever. right um harry is a tale on his own too so like mm. he defeated death also so in a way couldn't he be like mm. his own elder <laughs> <laughs> like can't he be his own hallow like what he, you, you threw me off with that one like he's a horcrux and a hallow <clears throat> double whammy yeah, you're saying just because he, he his story is like something that would be in the fairy tale book yeah like it's like all these are trying to defeat death but and harry did actually defeated death as mm. a person so like is it possible that he, it won't work on him and would he still have love protection he or is that a one-time use? He's got it all. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he, he does have it all. And and if he gets love protection, he wouldn't to... he have gotten that from a bunch of other people already? Like, in a weird way, aren't all these people dying for Harry? Like, did Dumbledore give him a little love protection in the meantime? I know, and, like, but my point was about, like, the death thing. Cause that he's a hallow? No, that, like, the all these objects were to defeat death. Everything in this book mm -hmm. is to defeat death. And, like, Harry's the only one that's actually, like, accomplished that. Right. So, like, everyone wants what he is. So, like, is it possible that, like, nothing can <laughs> touch him? Hmm. <laughs> There's Jen's Maybe. bringing me on. There's a real... And I can tell you guys about this now because you're, you're at this point. But... um. One of my favorite little fan theories, and it's one that J.K. Rowling has said is her favorite, is there's this idea of the Horcrux hunt, and that it's a like a typification of the whole series. So in the in the tale of the three brothers, there's three brothers, and death is like becomes the master of each of them essentially. And um, there's one where this this fan theory is like Dumbledore represents death in the series. Voldemort represents the elder brother who takes the wand. The middle brother is Snape who gets the resurrection stone. And the youngest brother is Harry who's the invisibility cloak. And Dumbledore leads both of them, Snape and Voldemort, into their death, possibly. And then all of a sudden, the third brother, which is Harry, welcomes, like, you know, welcomes death and goes to his death. No problem. Mm. But there is like a, a lot of issues that even fans have with that theory of like not knowing because even with the third brother, there's a lot of questions for um, how does this actually happen? Like, does Dumbledore actually lead him into this or not? So, hmm. so I don't know. So, like, even your the idea on what is, like, what the the three Deathly Hallows actually are and, and where they actually place in this part of the series is just, like, a weird, weird part of the story at, at this moment. You're not really sure what's happening. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So here's another line that we ha even have in this this whole series where it says, um, "Harry pulled the invisibility cloak over himself and descended through the floors. At last, walking down the marble staircase into the entrance hall, perhaps some tiny part of him hoped to be sen uh, sensed, to be seen, to be stopped, but the cloak was, as ever, impenetrable, perfect, and he reached the front doors easily." 
Do you guys think if you were in that situation, then you would have done what Harry did and not said goodbye, or would you have said goodbye? I think I would have said goodbye, but then it'd probably be hard to say goodbye. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. I feel I'd like to say that I would have said goodbye. That's my instinct. But I think in that moment, there's a certain fragility to doing what you have to do. Hmm. So once you know you have to do something, especially hard things or things you don't want to do, sometimes, I don't know if you've experienced this, where you feel like you just can't think about anything else. You just got to like do it. You kind of beeline for the thing because you know if you have a chance to stop or say goodbye or do whatever other thing. In Harry's case, he might not do it or it would slow him down or it would just like mess with his resolve. So in that moment, maybe, maybe that's the only way to do it because what's like, that would be torturous to say all his goodbyes. It's a little weird that he only said goodbye to Neville. Um, kind of, Mm. he spoke to him, but that was it. And Neville Mm. didn't know. Um, and then I'm curious what even happens to the Pensieve are Hermione and Ron running out, trying to, find nagini now um yeah and how are they going to destroy nagini right and and it has to be happening like now um because otherwise it gets more complicated with Voldemort, and he'll still have a horcrux left and then yeah so i don't know it's a little weird so i guess the the not saying goodbye makes sense to me yeah it makes sense i just don't know if i could do i know but i wasn't mad about it when i was reading it i'm like yeah yeah, because you guys were even debating that in the previous one. You're like, does would he go, you know, tell Hermione or go go with him or like, you know, communicate this? And you, I think Danny, you were like, yeah, he definitely would. He should. <laughs> it would show a lot of growth. And then all of a sudden, he's going and he's doing this alone, which is very hairy, but it's like mm. almost noble of Harry to do that. Too. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like respect him for it almost. I don't know, and maybe he knows it too. I don't know if anyone else would have understood. I can't imagine Hermione or Ron being like, that sounds like a good idea. We support you. You know, like I think they would try and talk him out of it and say, we have to come up with some other plan for him just to say, no, I need to actually die. I I don't know. Just that would take some convincing Hmm. and he doesn't have time for that. Um, So they'd be pretty out of the loop, not knowing uh, all the memories. And that's a tough story to explain. Hmm. But that's also kind of sad because then if Harry dies, they would never know that Snape was good. Yeah. Except Dumbledore's portrait is the only remaining thing that would kind of know. Wouldn't it be nice if all three of them went into the pensive? Yeah, I know. And that is possible because Dumbledore did with Harry before. I know, but it's just like they disappeared. Yeah, it seems like they didn't. Hmm. Because then they all could come out and then Harry could just be like, bye. Hmm. <laughs> I know. Uh, was the moment where um, he pulls the resurrection stone out of the snitch was that a surprise to you guys? Do you guys, um, again, even I guess to your question, is guess. there a purpose for that other than him just to not be alone when he's dying? Maybe. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I just can't figure out what, because. I'm trying to find a way where Harry gets all three. I mean, it's the title of the book after all. And I can't figure out if that's how Dumbledore could have orchestrated that either in the past. Like we had said after the wand was first stolen by Grindelwald um, from Grigorovich, it felt like there was a moment where Dumbledore borrowed the invisibility cloak from James back when they died Mm -hmm. that we were saying Dumbledore might have had all three of these items then. Um, Although, Ooh, no, not the stone. No, you're right. Cause that's back when I was saying um, there was a chance that uh, the resurrection stone was the philosopher's stone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah. So could he He have had had all three of these items? So yeah, he had two. And that could have done something. But now all three of these items are within the same circle of fighting. Um, 
And I'm just trying to see how Dumbledore could have set this up in any kind of way to go well. And it feels like that's why the Resurrection Stone was in the snitch. Again, I don't know why. Or maybe this is all part of like a thing to get them destroyed because it's too much power. Hmm. So when Harry and the Horcrux get you know, killed in some crazy way, then maybe all of these things die or something. I don't know. Um, and then it, it's a way that there's no more Horcrux issue, no more Hallows, and they're all just mm-hmm. left behind um, all at once, maybe. But I feel like Dumbledore has a plan. Yeah. I just wish I knew what it was. Yeah, I know. That's the whole idea in this is that you just don't know what is going on. Uh, like, to some extent. Hmm. You see, like, Harry is mar- watch- walking in uh, willingly. And I don't know. I, th- there's a point to it where you're like, maybe Dumbledore's plan really just was exactly what Harry's thinking. But I guess sometimes part of your love for Dumbledore is, you know, he he wouldn't just, you know, have that. But it's like the reverse of Snape. You only really hated Snape and you wanted him like bad things to happen to Snape and all of a sudden he's good. So it's maybe like it's the opposite. Of Dumbledore you love yep. and all of a sudden you realize he's a little bit more corrupt and mature and or uh, immature and like really manipulated the situation and it's just going to be left with that, hmm. which is just, it would be a tough one, but it's very human nature, you know? Are we right. calling Snape good? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he goes to, the, he works on the good side <laughs> and not the good person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that goes to my theory about all Slytherins. Also, anyway. Wait, what, what about all Slytherins? No, they're all Death Eaters, but you guys oh, don't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> said, no, there's, there, you could be good and bad and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, I guess like when John was saying that, uh, I didn't know exactly who that would be. Someone like, in my mind, Horace was a great example mm-hmm. um, because I he was kind of helpful. <laughs> oh, he Slughorn. <laughs> um, wait, what? <laughs> when he was like, the one that turned oh. himself yeah, 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 exactly. Um, <laughs> Literally all I think of when that. I hear that name. And, and it feels like Dumbledore kind of trusted him and whatever. But <laughs> every other Slytherin was eh. And then Dumbledore even told Snape, like, uh, we, we may be sort too early. Like, he might have been a Gryffindor. And then yeah. according to that theory, it's like, yeah, well, maybe all Slytherins really are bad. None of them <laughs> stayed behind to fight. I know. That is um, devastating. None of them stayed back. Uh, Yeah. Which I was right about. <laughs> yeah. Also. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So ten to a two, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we do have again. Someone gave all the predictions for like certain things, and we'll we'll have like a little discussion after the whole podcast is done, and uh, we'll talk about what your predictions. Wait, someone were. actually tallied. Someone them. went back and like recorded all of the predictions. <laughs> there's a, That's there's awesome. a thing in our Discord, and it's just <laughs> one person essentially was listening to it, and they, we caught them early enough that they're like, "All right, I'll just you know." No so way. After every yeah, podcast, yeah, yeah. they would like right at this minute. You know, Jen oh predicts my, this, wow. and at this minute, Danny predicts this. And it, we, I can. I like, wanted to know this. Yeah, so I know I it's a long document. So it. that is. I'm very what? excited to go through that guys, with you guys because it's gonna be fun. We yeah, because you guys forgot half the most yes. more than half the stuff that you predicted yep. anyway. So well, some of it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's exciting. So I hope I fun. win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all of a sudden it's a competition yeah. with the real women it's always all of been a, a competition. sudden it's well it's, it's been. been a vague idea of a competition yeah. but now there's gonna be a score you know yeah, what i mean yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm excited about you're excited to lose huh no i'm winning mm. <laughs> i mean yeah it could be close. we'll see we'll see what we have to bet on it you know um i love uh i love the sentimentality of this chapter though there's a few moments especially when it says when Harry's like marching and he, he is about to use the resurrection stone, it says, again, Harry understood without having to think. It did not matter about bringing them back for he was about to join them. He was not really fetching them. They were fetching him. And then it, when they're back, it says, Lily's smile mm-hmm. was widest of all. She pushed her long hair back as she drew closer to him. And her green eyes, so like his, searched his face hungrily as though she would never be able to look at him enough. You've been so brave. He could not speak. His eyes feasted on her, and he thought that he would like to stand and look at her forever, and that would be enough. Yeah, I, I mean, you guys, we've talked about why Harry brought them back, but um, there's this is like the final line, <clears throat> which shows just a lot of Harry's bravery in this, this whole uh, section. Um, it says, and 
Uh, Voldemort says, I thought he would come, said Voldemort in his high, clear voice, his eyes on the leaping flames. I expected him to come. Nobody spoke. They seemed as scared as Harry, whose heart was now throwing itself against his ribs as though determined to escape the body he was about to cast aside. His hands were sweating as he pulled off the invisibility, invisibility cloak and stuffed it be, uh, beneath his robes with his wand. He did not want to be tempted to fight. I was, it, it, it seems mistaken, said Voldemort. You weren't, said Harry. Um, and he said it as loudly as he could with all the force he could muster. He did not want to sound afraid. The resurrection stone slipped from beneath between his numb fingers and out of the corner of his eyes he saw his parents, Sirius and Lupin, vanish as he stepped forward into the firelight. At that moment, he felt that nobody mattered but Voldemort. It was just the two of them. What do you think about Harry in this whole chapter? He shows a lot of maturity, but how did you mm. like him as a like marching to his death like this? Pretty I like noble. Him. Brave. Mm. Pretty true Gryffindor. Yeah. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> Just represent. Yep. <laughs> I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to drag me out. <laughs> I'd be hiding in my invisibility cloak and no one would ever find me. <laughs> it's like, what's that? Uh, what's the one guy who like falls asleep in the middle of the woods and like wakes up 30 years later? Rip Van Winkle. That's what Jen would be. She'd be like a legend in Hogwarts. <laughs> she would just go out under the invisibility cloak, fall asleep in the forest for 30 years, and all of a sudden wake <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yikes. Mm. So final question before we do the read. Is Harry dead? I mean, I asked, I asked that a lot of times. <laughs> Final How many variations of our yeah. answer can we give? <laughs> There's not a ton of else we can even discuss in this chapter unless Danny like, has anything yes else. But... Or no. Or something in between. You look so tan. I think he's there. dead. <laughs> I think he's dead? Yep. So, I mean, the thoughts. options, you guys are even saying this. If he's dead, then he's cast a protection spell. And maybe everyone in the Hogwarts is going to be safe. If he's alive, how does that work? If he's alive, what is the what is the point of it? Is, is then Harry going to defeat Voldemort himself and kill the snake? I'm sorry, I got distracted. Very no. <laughs> good, my Danny's tan. <laughs> and I yeah. wore dark, isn't it? What's the um? Uh, You're on the dark side. Christmas that's, with the cranks. The point. Tim <laughs> Allen wears dark colors so he doesn't look tan. I was trying to mimic him. Um, well, I'm wearing red, so I match my sunburn. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> wait, yeah, sorry. I feel like Ron and Hermione will take care of Nagini. I don't know how. Oh, and Neville, the three of them. I kind of think Harry's dead. So, what happens if Harry's I don't dead? Think he's dead? If Harry's well, dead, so is Voldemort. Except not really because of no, no, Nagini. No. Yeah, wait, that. How would Voldemort get killed then? Literally, that is my whole theory. And we were talking about it for a long time. <laughs> Wait, how then? <laughs> because he's killing a part of himself. He's killing another horse. Yeah, yeah, but even if he does, and then even if uh, Ron, Hermione, like and Neville backfires. kill Nagini, Voldemort is still there, no, tetherless, but I don't he'd be there. Think so. so that's what I'm saying. Like, then who kills Voldemort? Like, I think he killed. If. if if Voldemort, if you kill your own Horcrux, I feel like you should die. But again, I think it would only be the Horcrux. Yeah. But then he could still die by another means, like something with using the wand when he's not the rightful owner. If Harry was the rightful owner, so the wand kind of works, but then also explodes oh, or Harry something. if Harry is the rightful owner and he uses it on Harry, then he's Then killing Harry himself. can't be defeated with it. That, yeah, that I've said that before too. Yeah, but... I just can't, it doesn't, eh, it doesn't work for me. I Whoa. want it to be true. I just can't figure out how it would be in a satisfying way. But then does Your everyone else come together? No, I know. That's so why none of them are. We don't have enough pieces. So I'm like, would everyone else then fight Voldemort together? He won't have any tethers. What? Yeah, because that's working really well right now. <laughs> no, I know. But then so basically I actually at the think end they of this could. book, you think Voldemort is 
the winner. Uh, no, I think he'll be dead. And Bye. good wins. But how? Either by Harry, the rest you of the students, or everybody. Died. Yeah, I think he is dead. But I'm saying if he did die, then the Horcrux is dead. Then Ron, Hermione, Neville kill Nagini. Then it's just Voldemort, real Voldemort. But no but, one's been ever been able to defeat real Voldemort. Like these kids don't know how to do that. Yeah, it's true. McGonagall. Yeah. With the Weasleys, <laughs> with everyone else, like all together. I, I know, think that's but he what I'm still trying has to... Death Eaters, which they clearly, like Snape and Voldemort were not in Hogwarts. And a lot of them died, like the good side. By Death Eaters. Right. So how are these kids going to defeat Voldemort? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> With That's love. why it's not true. With love. Um, love, of course. <laughs> That's why he can't be dead. Yeah, so, but how does that work? How does like, him being alive? Yeah, so Voldemort... Because either Voldemort, it backfires and he, Voldemort dies, not Harry... Or Voldemort kills part of himself, so then it makes Voldemort weaker, and then Harry can kill Voldemort and Nagini in one shot. (laughs) (laughs) Or someone else is trying to get Nagini while he is going against Voldemort because it didn't work. Because maybe part, like his scar disappears, or part of him disappears, and he can't see into... Voldemort's mind anymore. Yeah, I could I feel see like that's that. The only way that it would it would work. Like Harry's safe from a love charm, the same one from his mom and from everyone else. He's I wearing like the watch the Weasleys gave or him. Or the house. He's got all like this I was love. Saying just before too. Yeah, and he's a willing sacrifice. Mm. So all of these things I think help him. So then when Voldemort attacks him, it kills the Horcrux. Or the same thing that happened to Voldemort the first time bounces back, like you said. And he could die from that. But then Nagini's still a weird loose end. So they would have to just like kill Nagini real quick after all that. And then. But he also. Well, I don't know if he'll speak parcel tongue after this, but. In theory, no. But Ron can now. So. <laughs> yeah. Ron's been taking notes. <laughs> translating. <laughs> That's Ron's that was greatest. really good. Yeah. yeah good you know it. <laughs> Jen's got it, guys. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> mm. Part Slytherin, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, anything else in uh, this chapter before we listen? I'm just waiting to see how the gold stuff that came out of Harry's wand comes back. Yeah. What, what was the deal? Yeah. There's something magical happening that goes beyond what we understand. Wait, like right now? It, well, in this chapter, he mentioned um, his wand. Mm-hmm. Saying He's, that. He mentioned the phoenix feather wand that broke when he oh, left the Dursleys. Okay. So to have a callback to that wand right now and yeah. just like walk, it just makes me think, well, yeah, I forgot about that. What, what was the deal? It or broke. Fox will come and then it drop his wand fixed. Oh yeah, is Fox ever coming back? Hmm. Um, That'd be cool. Can tears bring you back from the dead, or only heal you? <laughs> what about it? Um, or can tears bring back a wand? Can it heal the wand because it was Fox's huh. feather? And we the fox feather it dies and then it comes back. Right. Maybe, maybe his wand <laughs> died Fox go and then right he in and come intercepted back. the attack. Um, yeah, you're right. It would come back and then reform. Well, you know, it's not that satisfying, but there's there's something in all these missing pieces. Oh, that's what we were told, right? How well, it sends. It's not that satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. John said we get answers to our questions, but, but they not. won't necessarily be the answers we want. I don't know. I'm not. I'm gonna set my expectations low. <laughs> yeah, keep your expectations. Yeah, yeah. Um. Also, another thing I was thinking is, <laughs> did we see Tonks in the Resurrection Stone? Uh-uh. Is there a chance she's alive? I uh, I don't think we saw her just because she's not. Uh, she's not as important to, to Harry. Harry. Yeah. So did Harry get to choose who popped up? Who Probably was it again? His subconsciously? parents? Subconsciously chose. Yeah, yeah. Just like the people Sirius most important. Sirius Lupin, his oh, parents. Sirius. That's um, right. 
They were all friends though too. Yeah. Like as ki- I don't know if that Yeah, true. That's yeah. maybe an outlier, but um The yeah. abandoned boys had all found a home cursed, here. Huh? Everyone from that grade died. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Everyone's dying in this book. What the heck? Hmm. And it's like this chapter is kind of like Harry's a cursed guy walking toward his death. It's like everyone who kind of interacts with Harry is cursed. So hmm. um, it's like, will some people meet their demise in the next uh, few chapters? Like, oh, will more people die? Sacrifice. Right. Which is just a little devastating of a, of a point. Which is, yeah, Jen, why do you think that the sacrifice is going to be covering those people to some extent? Yeah, like exactly. Then no, they can't die. That's how they could defeat everybody. Because Harry's love protection. Is there shit? Alright, what if Ancient he dies magic. and then he comes back? But, but how unlike would he anything do that? else. Because he's not real. Because he's not real. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. This is all he a dream. Defeated it's death. All in his head, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that like Inception or whatever yeah. that movie? It was all, oh, like a, all dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a dream. Yeah, yeah. Do you imagine if the whole small. entire series is really all in Harry's head? <laughs> yeah. He wakes up, he's under the cover, he's still mm-hmm. 11. He's, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be crazy. crazy. And then uh, Dudley's just banging on the door, yeah, giving yeah. him a hard oh my time. Gosh. All the books were a dream. And then he, well, that would be a very sad <laughs> yeah, dream. That song, that's like a <laughs> I don't think Maybe. I know that song. You don't know that song? Do I know that song? They both probably don't know. Oh, true. <laughs> it. Hmm before our time huh <laughs> well, it no, starts with it was all a dream yeah if you don't know you it was Word all a dream yeah yeah, okay. yeah that's there a biggie go. song i mean Come i was gonna on. say oh, nice. that song. <laughs> i was no. singing it yeah but no so. one heard it except for no no i heard <laughs> it it just doesn't mean anything to me it could have been a song you were making up i, I don't know <laughs> yeah i'm famous then <laughs> whoa <laughs> all right uh give me i mean harry's probably our favorite character in this chapter harry's probably the hot tamale in this chapter uh though what do you have a favorite moment in this chapter at least i mean uh, unless you have different ones for this as well his mom and him were as cute yeah mm-hmm. yeah great moment. Telling me you're yeah so brave and i think it's sweet they had people to walk with him yeah. mm-hmm. too his yeah. not death but yeah it's it's gonna be when you guys again go through your second read it's gonna be interesting the way this chapter is written it's just such good writing so like uh, every line just has so much meaning to it and so much like importance and it just everything leads to this some of the the lines in this chapter and when you reread it you're like you really appreciate how good of a writer she is Mm. for squeezing so much like meaning into some of these lines it's fantastic so what are we missing and what are we read between the lines now? <laughs> all the things that we'll pick up on our next read. <laughs> what did I miss in my second read? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think my favorite moment is the one uh, with Lily and uh, the um, uh, Harry too. Just like mm-hmm. looking at each other and they like can't get enough. It's just such a devastating moment. It's oh, good. And I guess Harry's just the favorite character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, there any I hot feel tamales like, yeah. in this one? No, it's no, the no, whole no. culmination of the books. So you're like, Harry's got to win this one. Yep. I guess Hagrid is a little bit of a hot tamale. He's, yeah. He's standing up for yeah, Harry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, you guys ready to read or listen? Ready. Well, thanks for joining us on this journey of Harry Potter and the first time readers. No reading, Jen. I'm not reading it. I'm reading the last page. Oh. This one. <laughs> Refreshing the memory real quick before we the read. The boy who lit. I was reading between the lines. <laughs> the, yeah, as Voldemort says, it's the boy the who boy. lived, right? All right, I'm going to go stand up. Take a breather for five minutes. Boy. Mm. We're only doing one chapter. Yeah, just one. Yeah. It's like, uh, it'll take like 25 minutes. Ooh, big chapter. It'll take like I 25 might just... minutes bounce because we're not like well do you like this guy's thing we yeah, just have a reaction right? yeah we just kind of read yeah and mm, john tries to make sure we don't talk too much at the end so we oh, can yeah. save it for the real episode yeah but i always do <laughs> i mean not too much but yeah 
yeah enough or i'm like yes i was right or no you were right <laughs> <laughs> yeah God. i think i might just go so i can get home by 9 30. yep sounds good i don't even know oh i thought it was earlier than it actually is oh yeah I, mean, I think the last is, I checked was 8.30. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was thinking, like, if I could be out by 9. But you I did it. Just, I, I, well, I stayed awake. So true. And you yes. talked. <laughs> yeah. And I can zone these two out and just focus yeah. on laughing <laughs> with you. Yeah. You guys have your inside jokes. We have Lord of the Rings uh, moments. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. You're the only one that heard me. <laughs> I mean, I usually am. Like usual. Yeah true all right good night i'll see you all right everyone i'm gonna start a new stream join that i'll start it in like two minutes so oh